and welcome to another struggle video here from the Offcut Garage in um, well late night show Australia. I am trying to figure out how to get these other two cables in here for the second inverter in the straight duct. We can easily fit another pair of these 70 mil cables. But here this bend is the whole problem. Up here it is all right again because we have far more space here in this crossing and I can just get the other pair of cable up here and then they will run in between these two cables here. No problem at all. Nice wiggly bend here but down here there is no way to get them around the corner nicely. And I really don't want to push this too hard here. That's just not what you do with cables. If this corner would be wider <laughs> okay, so this problem is out of the way, I would say. We've got no issues to having another pair of cables in here. Here in between, and then going down through the clamp into our battery shelf. It's good, right? It's a good solution. I like it. Should have done here the same. And all these corners. Not that we need it, but um, it looks good. Maybe I can make two more of these and can put them here as fake corners. So it looks the same then, right? Yeah, but only because I've got so much time. So this time I'm starting here from the inverter because then I don't need to shut down my battery shelf here. We can just connect the positive and negative here and working our way backwards. And then once we are there, we just shut down quickly, connect everything and turn everything back on. So in this case, I don't need in this case, I don't need to wait for two or three hours until I can turn everything back on here. Usually during the day, I'm not doing this because I'm missing out of so much solar then. Guys, I'm tight. I'm tight. I need every kilowatt hour I'm getting here. Okay, Andy, stop talking. Get these cables in. Okay, I'm not going to I'm not going to connect the positive right now. Yeah, so it goes to this mega fuse here. And then we've got the same cable run as the other ones. And look at this. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. And with our extended corner down there, no problem at all to get them around up to there. Okay, let's do the negative and then we go to bed. I don't, I don't like the situation with the cables here. They shouldn't be exposed, you know? Even they are double insulated, but because it's such a tight bend here. I have tried with conduit, but it's too stiff. It doesn't, doesn't flex enough to go around this sharp radius here. The only thing I can think of is to put a cover on top of it, which goes from here to here and covers this whole area again. A piece of aluminium, like a U-shaped aluminium, 
or like a plastic i don't know yet any ideas let me know uh, camera on a tripod it's the worst situation ever let's see you can fit this one in between here can if we oh it is f tight man this is tight yeah i think i got it i think i got it somehow yes 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 we got it once this project is finished here i'm taking a break for a year or so i don't want to deal with any cables any duct any heat shrink or ring locks anymore i just want to sit here and watch the numbers that'll be nice but unfortunately this is not reality this is just a dream but sometimes it's good to dream Okay, unfortunately I cannot determine the length I need for the negative cable now here because I need to take off the cover and then feed this cable under the positive through to the negative bus bar down there to where this hole is and um, then cut it. But um, well, as long as these two are live, I'm not going to do this. So it needs to wait until tomorrow morning. That means have a good night. Okay, Google. What's the time? It's 10.23 p.m. See you tomorrow. Hey, you wonderful good morning and welcome back here to the off-grid garage in sunny hot australia it is it is sunny hot today we had some rain last night and now the sun is coming back it's a bit oh so the quick shutdown procedure for the whole system will be disconnect solar turn off the main switch this shuts the whole system down no incoming power anymore no outgoing power anymore Batteries are isolated, everything done. And this is basically the reason I wanted this one here, the incoming solar main switches, as close as possible to our main circuit breaker here. So it is in close proximity and we can easily shut this down in one go. Within two seconds, the whole system is dead. Inverter has turned off, battery has turned off, even the fan has gets warm. Because some people had suggested to have these main switches up here just right underneath the combiner box so we have short cables and don't need to go through the duct again but i wanted to have this one as low as possible as well you know my wife is a bit shorter and if something happens she needs to shut this down as well or anyone else there will be a proper labeling here on all these devices of course and also a shutdown procedure sign here in this area explaining all this again in all details yeah just in case i'm away with the tesla and someone needs to shut down the whole system read and act now you can also see the mega fuse covers i have prepared already can't believe this is the last cut for a while hopefully <laughs> yeah. this is all i have left over of the 70 mil cable it was a tight measurement <laughs> i thought i've got a bit more Someone recently left a comment under one of my videos and was a bit concerned that the uh, smart shunt here actually can pivot and short between the two rails here. But um, practically this is not possible unless this screw is loose here and this screw comes off altogether 
or the screw of the circuit breaker comes off altogether. So the smart shunt actually has enough space to turn towards the positive bus bar. This is, this is not even unlikely, this is basically impossible. This is impossible that both screws get loose and one is even coming off altogether. And then the other 50-50 chance is, will the smart shunt go this way or this way? So, uh, nah, nah. I always use these bell mouth ring locks here. They are widening up a little bit here where the cable entrance is and funnel all the little strands into the ring lock. So very easy to insert these millions of little strands here into the ring lock. There we go. You can see the copper there. It's all the way in. Okay, hey, let's do our last crimp. Can't believe it. And I'm using the 50 millimeter die for a 70 millimeter ring lock <laughs> because this is so nice and tight and of course they are long enough to crimp twice I think that's it there we go and if you haven't seen before I have actually cut open one of these ring locks here and this is how it looks inside so there's pure copper all the strands they have melted together it's a cold weld people call it this is how i cut it open you can see this is all one piece so perfect crimp all the single cable strands they're getting one with the ring lock this is all one material I've already turned everything back on. It's basically the opposite order. I don't even bother using a, a resistor anymore to pre-charge the inverters. The main switch here closes the contact so fast. Of course there will be an inrush current into the capacitors. And I've never seen any recommendations in any manual specifications, spec sheets, data sheets or something of inverters or solar charge controllers even to pre-charge the capacitors before turning it on. Well, we always do this when we connect our inverters to a 12 volt battery for testing, for example, because the spark is fairly, fairly large. And even knowing that, it scares the shit out of me. So I always pre-charge the capacitor of the inverter. But here in these fixed installations, I don't know, is anyone still pre-charging capacitors for fixed installations? Never heard of this before, never seen any documentation, never seen any pre-charge buttons or something in these installations anywhere. I don't know. I have now also connected the Raspi with a fixed wireless, <laughs> with a fixed wireless, with a fixed network cable here. It was a bit inconsistent with the Wi-Fi for some reason, but every three, four weeks, the Raspi loses connection to the Wi-Fi network for some reason and it just says disconnected. And you have to either restart it or you have to plug in a LAN cable anyway and then go into the configuration and reconnect it to the Wi-Fi and then it works for another three to four weeks just fine without any issues. And I don't know why this is happening, if this is an issue with the Venus OS running on the Raspi or it is an issue with the Raspi itself. I mean, I have never done I've never done a firmware update on the Raspi since I got it. So this is the original firmware it came with, and maybe an up-to-date firmware will fix this. I don't know. See there, the little Wi-Fi symbol. I I kept the Wi-Fi connected as well, so in case of losing the router connection here, the wired connection, it will switch over to Wi-Fi automatically. So as a backup, as a redundancy, just ensuring the Raspi stays online all the time, or at least as much as possible. 
There are so many little things still to do which are not even captured by the camera here with such a project. A cable tie here and there, little piece of velcro around the cables, gluing the stands of our covers back on with the cement. Yeah, we now have a USB hub here as well because the four ports are not enough anymore on the Raspi. And this was basically another three hours today just mucking around with little, little things here and there. Insane! Such a project is insane. Well, I guess we are done now. We've got all the conduit lids mounted. Even I have to take them off again. I just wanted to give you a final perspective of the ready built power wall here, including the battery shelf. Yeah, I think it um, came out pretty good. We need to stand a little bit more back. There you have the full power wall and the battery shelf all in one picture. Pretty nice. I'm really. I'm really happy and pleased how this project turned out now eventually. Even it was a lot of work to... Uh, well, actually this was four weeks ago when I took the electrical cabinet off the wall here and then said I will get everything done in one weekend. And when you build such a system, there's always there are always questions arising. And well, you guys have helped me out a lot here with all the different options we had sometimes here. So we can really say, well, this is a community project. Don't give me a hard time here because this duct is gray. They are only available in gray. I've never seen them in white. Because they usually sit in switchboards or electrical cabinets. They're always gray. Always. Well, I guess the only thing we need to do is um, turn on this inverter here. I'll just um, ensure again we are disconnected from the multi. Yeah, this is our inverter link. It's turned off. And we just turn it on and see what happens, right? Should I pre-charge? Let's see what happens. On. Came on for a second. Have we blown the 200 amp fuse? <laughs> nah, that looks still good. I don't know. There was it. Ah, oh, hang on, here it is. Need to turn it on. Need to turn it on. Okay, let's measure. 229 volts. Obviously, we've got like 53 volts here. Yep, that's correct. Let's see if the Phoenix inverter shows up here as well after a moment. I've just plugged it into the Raspi. There it is, inverter, it says. Well, it doesn't give us any new picture here. And nothing new here as well. It doesn't show up as another inverter or another AC load or something. Okay, then we can put on this cover here as well, because the next step would be to turn on the link between the two inverters. But we are not going to do this right now. Um, uh, we need to have a look at the configuration of the multi first and understand what will happen when it sees power on the input per default settings i haven't changed any configuration i haven't even logged into this one yet the only thing i did was the firmware update via the vim and that's it and as always guys until the next video you stay charged and safe the dog burped <laughs> and thank you again for watching see you then bye bye